In this lesson, I'll talk about the concepts you need to master in order to become a successful programmer. In order to become a successful programmer, to be able to produce working code, and to contribute to software development projects, there are a number of concepts you need to master. There are a number of fundamental concepts that are core to developing software. Listed on this slide are eight key concepts. These include requirements analysis, knowledge of database management systems, and HTML for web development. Also included on the list are basic net networking concepts, software testing, and knowledge of the software development lifecycle, or SDLC. The last two items on the list are object-oriented programming and detailed knowledge of your particular programming language of choice, such as C-sharp, Java, or PHP. There are certainly other concepts that can be included depending on your career track, but the list on the slide represents the core of a foundational starting point. In the next few slides, I'll go through each one of these in more detail. Require requirements analysis is a great place to start. With requirements analysis, you're recording exactly the features that the customer desires in your software product. This can be difficult to do because oftentimes customers do not know exactly what they want. An experienced programmer can help customers to determine their exact requirements and lead to a successful project. This can be done through such techniques as use cases, mockups, prototypes, and user stories. Many systems today are web-based systems. Much of the data behind these web-based systems is stored in a database, and much of the code is devoted to interacting with the database from the website. In order to effectively design these programs, you need to have a command of fundamental database concepts. These include database design, normalization, and SQL, or Structured Query Language, and the syntax for select statements, insert statements, update statements, and delete statements. You will also need to master some type of programmatic access to the database from your programming language of choice. These include such technologies as ADO.NET, the Entity Framework, and the Java Database Connectivity, or JDBC. In order to effectively write code, you also need to ma master basic administration skills for a database. This will allow you to create new databases, back them up, and restore them. Another fundamental concept that programmers need to master is HTML or Hypertext Markup Language. HTML is the basic building block of all web-based systems in production today. Skills that you'll need to master are the basic syntax of HTML, design layouts with HTML, and the Document Object Model, or DOM. You'll need to understand such concepts as field validation and integrating JavaScript into your HTML code. Most programmers today also frequently use JavaScript libraries, such as the jQuery library. This is also a necessary skill. Most of today's software products either interface with the internet or a local area network. This means that programmers need to have a basic understanding of how networks function. You'll need an understanding of how to interact with servers on a local area network or a wide area network. You'll also need to understand HTML protocols and how they interact over the internet. You'll also need to be familiar with the IP addressing scheme used on the internet, as well as the domain name service, or DNS. Another aspect of networking that you'll need to be familiar with is how mobile devices interact with networks and their ability to periodically connect to a network. This results in special techniques that mobile devices need to be able to use to connect to the internet. This capability is called store and forward and is a very common need for these devices. One of the most common areas that's overlooked in software developing training is the area of software testing. Even though this area is often overlooked, it is one of the most important activities in a software development project. Delivering quality software that is reliable is a primary goal of almost every software development project. Programmers need to understand such concepts as unit testing, functional testing, integration testing, and user acceptance testing, or UAT. Without an effective software testing function, it's impossible to deliver quality working code. The next area to understand is that of the Software Development Lifecycle, or SDLC. The SDLC process defines software development teams, how, how they use this to produce working code. 
There are many different process models that software development teams use. Some of the more common methods are the Agile methodology, the Scrum methodology, and waterfall development. Many companies will use their own proprietary model to develop software, but these are generally based on one of the methods mentioned above. Programmers must be familiar with these processes in order to be effective in a software development project. These processes define what programmers do on a daily basis in their job. Most of today's programming languages are based on object-oriented models. Because of this, programmers need to be familiar with object-oriented programming and design concepts. Included are such common concepts as objects and classes, inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulization. The last but not least area that a programmer needs to be familiar with is their programming language of choice. You need to understand the syntax of your chosen language, such as Java or C Sharp, and be able to translate requirements into working code based on the syntax of your language. This will require quite a bit of practice to master the syntax of the language of choice. In summary, there are a number of key concepts that a programmer needs to master. This may sound like an overwhelming list, but if you're able to master these concepts, you'll be able to function as an effective programmer. This will allow you to meet customer expectations in terms of delivering the required features of the software, building software on time, and building it on budget. In the next few lessons, I'll lay out where you can get the training to master these concepts and how you can practice these for the required certification tests. This concludes this lesson on concepts. I, I hope it gives you an idea of the concepts you'll need to master in order to become a good programmer. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, I'll discuss options for getting training to become a programmer. There are several options available today, so each of them have advantages and disadvantages, so let's get started. Training today can come from multiple sources. These include such sources as books, instructor-led classes, online classes, vendor product demonstrations, and mentorships. I'll discuss each one of these in more detail. Buying books or reading books online is one of the traditional ways of learning and is a great way to get started on the topic. Books are not nearly as expensive as, inst as instructor-led training, and many books include web-based formats that are downloadable. Books sometimes include companion websites with downloadable content with think such content as tips and sample projects. There are also used books which are significantly less expensive than new books. The major downside of books is that many people find them boring and many people prefer web-based video training classes that are popular today. I found that a mixture of several different training methods works best for me. Instructor-led classes are probably the most expensive option, but it's a time-tested way of learning. Many cities around the world also offer boot camps and these types of classes that are very short and very focused on delivering software development skills. Some of these programs will even guarantee that you'll be able to be placed in a job after completing training. These programs tend to be very expensive and you need to be careful about researching the program before you commit funds. You'll also want to research the reviews of these types of programs online and also consult the Better Business Bureau if possible to determine the credibility of these types of programs. Another inexpensive way to get started with instructor-led classes is you may want to look for adult education classes that are taught as continuing education. These classes tend to be significantly cheaper than traditional college classes and really are a great way to get started. Another method to get your training is is the use of online classes such as this one. There are literally hundreds of sources that are available on the internet that offer online classes. Options range from single classes to subscription-based models. The major disadvantage of these classes is you often do not have direct access to the instructor to help you with labs and programming practice. The other limitation of most of these classes is that it's up to you to implement the coding exercises on your own computer without any help from an instructor. This can be a bit overwhelming and sometimes for a new student and, and it causes them to become frustrated. If you can find a mix of both on-premise classes and online classes, this will probably be the best option to give you both an affordable option with the online classes and hands-on training with the on-premise classes. The last option to consider after you've completed your initial training is a mentorship program. 
These programs are somewhat difficult to find and you generally have to be selected from a pool of applicants. But many programs pay you as an apprentice uh, in the program and you can learn to code from a senior developer. I've included some examples of these types of programs as links in the supporting document to this lecture. This approach is generally much better after you've already completed some initial training. The last area I will talk about is getting training through vendor product demonstrations. Many vendors hold free product training sessions throughout the country. Vendors such as Microsoft and Oracle regularly provide training on their latest software development tools and techniques. I've also provided some links of these programs where you can look at the schedule of events as well as some of their free online offerings as well. This is also a great way to keep up with new development techniques that are being offered by various vendors. In the previous material, I've outlined several different types of training sources. Each of them have their advantages and disadvantages, and you'll need to consider these as you develop your training plan and budget. Developing this plan and budget is an exercise that I've included in this class. Your budget and your timetable will help shape the types of training you can afford in terms of time and money. Our sample training plans that we've included will also help you decide which training is best for you. This concludes this lesson. I hope it's given you some good ideas for your training plan that you can include. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, I'll talk about entry-level certifications that are available for programmers. These certifications are available from a number of different vendors, and it will depend on the technology track that you have chosen for your training. Let's talk about some of the details of each of these. Since you're applying for a job without a formal degree, certification will be much more important for you. The certifications will indicate to an employer that you have proven basic skills with a particular product or development tool. These products and certifications change over time, so it's important to keep up with these as products change. Next, I will talk about some basic certification for Microsoft.NET, Oracle's Java, PHP, and some other types of certification. The first area of certification I'll talk about for this is Microsoft.NET and their Microsoft Certified Solution Developer Certification. In order to obtain this certification, you need to pass three exams. These are Programming in HTML5 with JavaScript, developing with ASP.NET MVC, and developing with Microsoft Azure. I've included a link where you can get more information on each of these. The next area I've included is some information about Java certification. The entry level Java certification is called Java Foundations Certified Junior Developer Associate. I've included a link for more information on the Java certification program. The next one is PHP and they all also offer several certifications that you can obtain. This includes the certificate from the W3C school, which includes MySQL, and also the Zen PHP certification. I've also included links for these as well. There are other certifications you can pursue as well. These include certifications for cloud-based operations such as Salesforce.com, Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, and several mobile certifications. I'll, I will include links for these as well as an attachment to this lesson. In summary, entry-level certifications exist for all the major platforms. The certifications are very useful when you don't have a degree or much experience and you're looking for your first job. Many of these certifications have low-cost web-based training to help you study for the exam. Certification needs to be combined with hands-on experience to be the most effective. Some of these exams can even be taken over the internet. This concludes our lesson on certification. I hope it has given you a good starting point for planning certifications on your master training plan. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson.